Good morning and a very warm welcome to you to our service on this, the last Sunday of March 2021, Palm Sunday. I'm delighted to welcome Ray Heasley to our virtual pulpit this week. And I want to thank all those who've contributed to our service in any way for both the recorded online version and the paper version. Joan Spence and Janet Crooks will read from the Bible and Mavis Johnson will lead our prayers of intercession. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of Holy Week. Today we remember the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. In our gospel reading, we will hear that his arrival on a colt, a young donkey, was greeted by a crowd of people, many waving branches of palm trees. Little did the people know what was to come within a few days. Praise God, they shouted. Hosanna. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. If we were able to gather in church today, we would be waving our own palm crosses together. As we cannot yet be together physically, let us come together in our own homes and online to worship the Lord. Praise the Lord, all nations. Praise him, all peoples. His love for us is strong and his faithfulness is eternal. Praise the Lord. Loving Lord, accept the praise and the prayers we bring, for you delight in goodness, O good and gracious King. Amen. Let's join together then in our first hymn, number 262. All glory, Lord and honour to thee, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna's ring. come together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we have reached Jerusalem. Lent is almost over, but the worst and the best is yet to come. In our mind's eye, we can see you ride into Jerusalem. We can hear the hosannas and see the crowds. 
But why come to Jerusalem to suffer and die on a cross? And all too soon. Before long, we will celebrate that we can meet you at the empty tomb this Easter, truly aware of the cost of your suffering and truly rejoicing in the freedom it brings us, sharing in your risen joy. But before then, you walk alone on that agonizing road to Calvary while we watch from the safety of the crowd. No more hosannas, no more palm leaves waved. We fear the cross just as you must have feared it, but we trust in you. God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you in prayer to praise and to worship you. Your love for us is strong. Your love and your faithfulness are eternal. Your love for us is undeserved. We could never earn it by faith, by our actions or by goodness. Your grace is sufficient for us. We want to thank you, Lord, for your steadfast love and for your many gifts. As the sun rises each day, we thank you for the new day, for new opportunities, for another chance to come ever closer to you. We have just this week remembered one year since the first lockdown began and all those who lost their lives to COVID-19 in that time. Though the year has been very difficult, so very difficult, we thank you for all who have nursed and cared for the sick and dying, and for all who have carried on working and continue to do so to provide us with essential services. We thank you for our family and our friends, for those who love us and for those whom we love. We thank you for our talents, our skills, our quirks, all that makes each one of us unique and loved. We look around us and are amazed at the beauty of your creation, the wonder of your planet, our planet, just a tiny part of our solar system and all that is beyond. We are but specks of dust in the grand scale of things, but you love us, each and every one. We thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. For you so loved the world that you gave your one and only Son. Lord Jesus, we remember your arrival into Jerusalem, a journey you could not avoid, and what would be your last one. We thank you for your life, your teaching, your miracles, your challenges, your ministry, and your final act of sacrifice for humankind. We have faith, never enough, but faith nonetheless. We believe in you. We thank you too for the Holy Spirit that you promised to your disciples before you finally left them, the helper, the spirit of truth. We pray that the spirit may guide us and help us to live as you would wish us to do, ever in your light. Forgive us, Lord, for the many times we let you down, for the times we are foolish, selfish, or unkind, for the times when we fail to show compassion to others, when we turn away from those who need our help. Forgive us our unkind actions, words and thoughts. No matter how hard we try, we are human and we fail you many times over. Give us the strength and the compassion to see the best in others and to serve others. May we all bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to our servant King. Bless us, Lord, as we walk our own path ever in your way, with you beside us. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. 
Amen. I am reading from Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2 and 19 to 29, a praise of thanks for victory. Give thanks to the Lord, because he is good, and his love is eternal. Let the people of Israel say, his love is eternal. Open to me the gates of the temple. I will go in and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Only the righteous can come in. I praise you because you heard me, because you have given me victory. The stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. This was done by the Lord. What a wonderful sight it is. This is the day of the Lord's victory. Let us be happy. Let us celebrate. Save us, Lord. Save us. Give us success, O Lord. May God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. From the temple of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God. He has been good to us. With branches in your hands, start the festival and march round the altar. You are my God and I give you thanks. I will proclaim your greatness. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good and his love is eternal. Amen. Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside the, in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming, the kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, it was already late, and he went out to Bethany with the twelve.
Hello everyone. Today we have a story which is one of the few recorded in all four of the Gospels, that of the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, what we now call Palm Sunday. The accounts of his approach to Jerusalem are strongly influenced by Psalm 118. By the time of Jesus, this was used at festivals sometimes with the waving of branches from palms or other trees, as a prayer for the restoration of the kingdom of King David. It would have been recited by pilgrims arriving in the city for the Passover festival. Jesus was travelling on the road from Jericho to Jerusalem, a long uphill slog from the lowest point on earth below sea level, through sandy hills and desert, a hot and dusty journey. Variations in the Gospel accounts show the writer's different emphases and intentions. Matthew emphasises the fulfilment of Old Testament prophecy, with the crowd asking questions about who this was. Mark, as usual, tells the story as it happened without much comment, although his words do have strong hints at Old Testament links. Luke highlights the self-evident nature of what was happening. If the disciples keep quiet, the stones will cry out. John tells the story briefly and emphasises that the disciples won't understand the full meaning of the event until much later. Today we focus on three aspects of the story from Mark. One about Jesus, one about his disciples and one about us. First, his humility. Have you ever been somewhere where the Queen made a visit? I can remember one many years ago. Roads were closed, places were cleaned, there was extra security, police motorcyclists checking the route, crowds waiting expectantly. Then the art riders and the special car are rolls, of course. The Jewish people had been promised a Messiah. Some expected a leader who would lead an uprising against the occupying Romans. Others expected a kingly figure, but they got neither of those. This is a man not on a chariot, but on a donkey who has come to die. In verse 9, Mark says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, quoting from Psalm 118. Whereas Luke's version says, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. For Mark, it is the lowliness and humility of the entry that matters, not any triumphal nature. 
This is a kingship of hidden majesty, of humble power to save. Other familiar aspects are here. Jesus is the messianic figure, coming on an untried colt as prophesied by Zechariah at the end of the Old Testament. The way the colt is obtained has hints of Jesus' unusual powers. The man who rides the donkey is more than an ordinary man, though the crowds do not know this at the time. From the beginnings of the Gospels, the normal power dynamics are turned upside down. Jesus came not as a mighty king, but as a vulnerable baby, born in a makeshift bed. In his actions and teaching throughout his ministry, Jesus shows the way of the servant, teaching that whoever would be greatest should be least. Now he enters Jerusalem not as a reigning king but on a donkey, and will soon be doing a task normally done by one of the very lowest of servants, washing his disciples' feet. In our world today, power and status seem to be as important as ever, whether in politics, business or the world of celebrities. Even in the past year, during the pandemic, the gaps between the rich and the poor, the powerful and the powerless have got wider. The Christian message includes a challenge to the values of the world. As we consider the issues in the communities in which we live, what would Jesus want to challenge? Who is marginalised and ignored? Second, their obedience. Do you like being told what to do? Or do you prefer to do the things you want to do in your own way? Two of the disciples were sent ahead to get a young donkey. They were told to say, the Lord has need of it and you'll get it back shortly. There was no explanation, no evidence of it being prearranged. Can you imagine your minister telling you to go to someone in a car park at the local supermarket and say to him that your church minister needs his car? You would probably be having words with her, perhaps like Sergeant Wilson asking, is that wise? Or perhaps putting it a bit more strongly. How did the disciples feel? They might have thought it was a strange thing to be asked to do and rather unlikely to work. But they went and did as Jesus said. And the owner let the donkey go. How would we have reacted? Would we be like Moses when God chose him in Exodus chapters 3 and 4 to lead his people and his reaction was to say things like, who am I? What if they don't believe me? Can't you send somebody else? It isn't always easy or comfortable and not obvious what God wants us to do. It could be risky. We will probably not be sure where it will take us. Jesus doesn't provide full route maps or job descriptions. He just says, follow me. In our Method Methodist annual covenant service, we have these words. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will, rank me with whom you will. These are challenging and uncomfortable words. Do we really mean them? Jesus knew in advance what would happen. We too can be reassured that God will give us the words and the strength to obey in any situation. And thirdly, our offering. Would you lend the minister your car? What if it was for someone you didn't know? What if it was for someone famous like a president or an archbishop or even the queen? You might just go via the car wash in that case. We're told that Sir Walter Raleigh placed his cloak across a puddle for Queen Elizabeth I as an act of chivalry. 
We give the red carpet treatment to royal royalty and celebrities as a mark of respect. In today's passage we read of several occasions when individuals offer something valuable to Jesus. The owners of the colt put up no resistance to the disciples taking the animal. They just let it go right away. Equally as Jesus enters Jerusalem the crowds of disciples lay their cloaks on the ground. In Jesus' time a cloak or outer garment was precious, especially for poorer people, to be looked after and repaired properly. It was often used in surety against a loan. So to throw down a cloak was a significant gesture, but to sacrifice a precious cloak in celebrating, celebration of the long-awaited Messiah was a privilege, the cost of which was not to be counted. What does it mean for us to give to God the things that we really value? What will we offer in wholehearted celebration of the presence of the Messiah in our lives? Not just things or money, time perhaps, gifts we have? Will we take on things that are not so nice, things that don't get the credit or headlines? It doesn't have to be spectacular or world-changing, but it could be for someone you help, more than ever at the moment where so many have lost so much and so many are feeling cut off and left out. The disciples are showing that they want Jesus to rule their lives. What kind of rule do we allow God to have over our lives? To conclude, here are words from two hymns. There wasn't time to include them both in our service. The numbers in Singing the Faith are 161 and 272. So if you have access to a book or the internet, you may want to read the full verses. Teach us, Lord, full obedience, holy reverence, true humility. Speak, O Lord, and renew our minds. Help us graf, grasp the heights of your plans for us, and by grace we'll stand on your promises, and by faith we'll walk as you walk with us. This is our God, the Servant King. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the Servant King. Amen. Let us come together in prayer as we pray for others. Dear Lord, we thank you that when we reach out to you, you hear our prayers. You know our concerns and our worries, as well as our joys. You know what is on our minds and in our hearts. We pray for a world that is troubled for people in crisis, for a planet that is threatened and damaged by harmful human activity. The pandemic continues and the rate of vaccination is so varied across the world. We pray for all those who are ill and for the dying. We pray for all who have lost loved ones and are struggling to come to terms with their loss. Our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone who is suffering mental health problems. We know that the pandemic and lockdown have caused so much more stress, anxiety, depression and misery. More social problems have sprung up and we pray for the homeless, the lonely, the unloved and the unlovable. May all the medical professionals and carers of the sick know your blessing and your strength. We ask that the healing power of your Holy Spirit may be poured out for all in need. We pray for all those seriously affected by extremes of climate, thinking especially of the floods in Australia. Our thoughts go out to the countries where people live in fear for their lives. We pray for the people affected by civil war, 
in countries included Yemen, Myanmar, Syria, Iraq, Sudan, and many others. May the leaders of every nation be persuaded to govern with compassion, making decisions for the good of the people and the planet. We pray for our family, our friends, our neighbours and our church family. In the quiet, we bring before you those known to us who need our prayer. May we always try to reflect your love, your compassion and your caring, Lord. These prayers we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Be it is not a temptation to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now our closing prayer. Go and walk the Jesus way. Go with him in triumph. Go with him in suffering. Go with your cross as he goes with his. Go knowing his blessing and his peace. Amen.